Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how we can install Red Hat OpenShift with virtualization on a Hyper-V hypervisor running on my home desktop for the purpose of creating a training lab for my study. This is not a production installation, it is purely for lab purposes. Red Hat offers many evaluations, such as, including for products such as OpenShift for 60 days. You can get those credit those trials from redhat.com. You will need to create a credential. Um, once you have a login and a trial, you should be able to access the hybrid cloud console at console.redhat.com, which is where our demonstration will take place. To be the youngest data creator, you should need to have 16 logical cores uh, in order to work. It should have at least 32 gig of RAM. Uh, or else the virtualization operators may not start. Dynamic memory should be disabled and it needs an extra disk on top of the installation disk. Generation two will work. I have used that in this demonstration. Uh, if you do that, you need to change the secure boot template and you do need to enable nested virtualization using PowerShell as sort of, as I'll demonstrate. So with all that said, let's uh, let's move across to the lab. In the hybrid cloud console, select OpenShift. You'll need to do the work inside. There's a cluster list you can specify. We don't click create cluster here. We need to select assisted installers clusters because that's what we're going to be demonstrating with. Click create new in here. And then we give our cluster a name and a base domain. OCP4 is what my training material was using, so I use that. I have my own domain, lelab.cloud, so I'm just using that. Uh, the default version is the latest version, but I'm installing version 4.14 because that is aligns with the EX316 exam I'm studying for. Enabling single node in OpenShift, which is what installs OpenShift on a single node. Nothing else needs to be changed here unless you have specific requirements, but um, for a lab, you shouldn't need to. Just click Next. You need to select the virtualization operator. Uh, it will also, also select the, the logical volume manager storage. After you click Next on that, then you're at the point where you need to create your host. So it, it uses a boot, a boot media to create that host, and you can use a full image or a minimal image. Minimal image requires internet to, to download the data. Um, that's what I'm choosing now. Yeah, the SSH public key, If you should know how to create this. There are videos on how you can do that. I've, I use SSH keygen, uh, putty gen also works. Install the Install the key. Um, and, the, and add the public key in here, and that, that will allow you to access the host if, um, if something fails during this process. Then just click Generate the Discovery DVD, then download it. Uh, if you, if you, you can also get the wget command if you want to download it on a Linux machine or somewhere else. Once it's downloaded, we're, we're at the point where we can now start actually creating the VM. So we'll switch, switch over to Hyper-V. Okay, so in my Hyper-V lab now, so to create a VM, just go to New VM, New Virtual Machine. Give the virtual machine a name. Optionally specify the location. Click Next. Generation one or two will work. I've chosen generation two. It adds some more security and other features. I recommend 32 gig of RAM um, or more. Disable dynamic memory. For networking, it needs external access. I'll use my external switch. Then you just create the disk. The defaults are fine here. And the next part is where you actually specify the boot DVD, the one that was the discovery image that we downloaded. Go in and find it. Click it, and then once it's there, just uh, go on next and finished. And now we've got the virtual machine. 
before we can boot it, we need to change some settings uh, to make it compatible. For secure boot, as I said, we need to specify the Microsoft UEFI certificate authority. Uh, for cores, we need to change that from 8 to 16. And we do need to add another disk, which is meets the logical volume manager storage requirement of the OpenShift to install. So I've just added a, adding a default one that will be thin provisioned, 500 gig, nothing out of the ordinary uh, in that and that'll be my data disk that will be used so now that's done the last thing we need to do is actually enable the nested virtualization which which uh, is done via powershell so i'll bring over the powershell window it, the command will will be a single line command. You don't get any any return from it. It just uh, it runs, and once you do that, you can start the virtual machine. It's basically get VM VM name, then set VM processor you know, virtual expose virtualization on, uh, and once that's done, you start your virtual machine. And it will, it, it, and the process may take a little while. Once it starts, you'll see it booting off, uh, off the, off that image. You'll see the Red Hat installation process starting up. Try and bring that up. And then there we go. And that's what, it, and that's sort of what you, you, you'll see. So we'll just flick back to the installer page on on red hat and we'll just wait take a few might take a few minutes i'll pause um and and then resume when it comes up there you go there, and, there, and now it's here you'll see it's got a status of ready which is good means everything's good to go it's got a default um host name which will change that um basically just change it to something relevant OCP for host one dot lead cloud that'll be that'll be the name of the node when the the host is built this click click next nothing else needs to change here don't need to do anything on the storage uh, just be mindful of the warnings uh, there's nothing we we need to do about them at the moment but they just be aware of them so in the in the networking section, cluster networking is not supported with a single node cluster. You can set a pod or service network. I am not doing that. Just be mindful of that warning about insufficient status. That is because we just have to wait. That that will take some time, as we're waiting for DNS resolution to be attempted, and we might also see something for NTP. Oh, and now it's ready. Um, once once it's ready, we can move on. We don't have to like click next. Um, this is just showing you the inventory of, of of the host. So once you get there, you just click install, and uh, and that's it. This process will take time. Uh, my experience in doing this lab several times is twenty to thirty minutes. I'm going to I'm going to speed through it so you don't have to sit here and listen to my voice for 20 or 30 more minutes. So I'm just going to speed through each section, and uh, and and that will it'll just take a few minutes. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just bringing up this uh, visual so you can see a bit more about what it's doing. So right now it's installing, it's which is writing the data to the to the installer disk. Then it's gonna it's gonna reboot, which is doing now. After it reboots, it will finalize the the cluster config. Um, 
it will then install the operators and then we'll have a working Red Hat Red Hat OpenShift cluster with virtualization. Okay, so we're in the finalizing stage now. So the the installation is is finalizing. Then it'll install. Then it'll install the operators. You'll start to see information popping up very soon, which will include the. the you can see the Kube admin credentials. You'll see, you can see the, the console web URL. URL. Uh, we can't access that URL just yet. I'll we'll go through that very shortly. I'm just waiting for the installation status to be completed. Now it has. Now it's now got the status of installed. So now the cluster is there. So the first, before we can log into it, we just need to put DNS entries in. If you have a DNS server, you, you can just put the entries in a DNS zone. I don't in my lab, so I need to update the host files on, on my computer. Um, You should also download the kube config. That file will be not available after a short period of time, so I'm just downloading it now. But now let's go back in to see these these entries here. The option two to use a host file uh, for Windows. I've got the location on the screen. Just open it up with an administrative prompt. Paste paste the entries in. Save the file. And close it. And then once you've done that, you just click on. Just once you've done that, just close out of this window or, or actually, you know, launch, click launch OpenShift console. You'll get these security warnings. They can be ignored because we're not, we don't have a trusted certificate in our, in, in, in my lab. So you'll get a, another one. Go through and ignore it. In a production environment, you should have a trusted certificate. So here you are. You got the kube admin credential here. You copy the password to the clipboard and paste it. And there we go. So the cluster is up and running. You can see the virtualization operator is there because you can see the menu on the left hand side. Let's go in, you see there's no virtual machines currently, but there are plenty of templates available. You can see them there. Source available means for the Linux ones means you can install them without a disk or any otherwise. Different instance types are all available. And as I said, so the last thing we'll see is that the node name does match what we set in the installation process. And that's the end of this demonstration. I do hope you enjoyed it, uh, found something useful. And if you like more content, feel free to like and subscribe and, and send me any feedback as this is my first video and I'm hoping to make more.